Moorfields Eye Hospital here has done some amazing stuff over the years, helping to improve people's sight. But one branch of its work that's hardly known about at all is the creation of prosthetic eyes for children born without real ones of their own. We followed one young girl born with this extremely rare condition as she went for her fitting. Morning, Pearl. <laughs> when Pearl was born 13 years ago, Mother Alex had no reason to suspect she was anything other than a healthy baby. The midwife said, oh, you know, she's perfectly healthy, heart's healthy, got all her fingers and toes. And um, I was sent home a few hours after she was born. OK, you go and get your dressing gown and slippers. But when her eyes didn't open, the family took Pearl to visit a specialist. My mother and Pearl's father went into the eye specialist and uh, I just remember that, you know, looking at his face when he came out and I've just never seen, you know, he just looked so shocked. Just get that hair tied back. The eye specialist evidently hadn't been incredibly tactful because I think he also was shocked and didn't know what to say. And what he actually had said was, your daughter's been born with no eyes. Pearl's condition is very rare, affecting around one in 10,000 children. Can you see the cat, Pearl? Sometimes. You talk, don't you, Dippy? Yes, yes. Can you open even wider? Not your mouth, your eyes. <laughs> That's it. So this side here is um, a prosthesis. In the old days, it's what people used to call a glass eye, but it's not made from glass no. nowadays. It's made from resins. So obviously oh. she can't see anything through that side. So this one then is the eye that she is seeing through. There's a bit of a retina there and a bit of a um, iris, but it's all not completely formed properly. Just the clapping. One, two, three, four. The development of our eyes is closely related to the growth of our brains, so many children with the condition suffer from severe learning difficulties too. At first, you hope that this is just um, maybe learning difficulties associated with being blind, but in fact, um, it's become apparent that it's much more complicated than that. Put your hand up if this is the higher sound. For four days a week, Pearl goes to a special school, but on Wednesdays, she comes here to Notting Hill Prep. It's a big day for the school. Pearl and the senior choir are due to perform tonight at the Royal Albert Hall. They have seen her in the playground. There are a few things that she can't do, things that she can't join in with necessarily in the, in the same way that they can. But in rehearsals, she's just one of us. You know, she's, she's just there shining away. So it's, it's been fantastic having her. And apart from anything, it's great to have the volume of her voice because she sings brilliantly. Singing at the moment, I think, is amazingly important. It's one of the ways that she can really, really get the words out. Something to do with putting a word to music just helps the whole vocalization process. But before she can take to the stage, Pearl has an important appointment at Moorfields Eye Hospital. Highly skilled technicians are putting the finishing touches on her new prosthetic eye. And as soon as it is ready, they will fit it. Whenever we get new patients coming in, they're always assuming they're going to be big, round, golf ball-sized eyes. Thanks to Hollywood, who seem to want to show it that way, that's not actually the case. They're generally sort of half, half round, if anything and then we try and make them as small as possible to fill the socket so that they're not weighing too much. She's rather fairer than I am and um, her father has very blue eyes, her brother has green eyes. We've come up with a sort of grey-blue colour. It's very important to, for a child to wear a, an artificial eye as they're growing, the face grows, so we need to keep making larger eyes to keep up with that growth so that they don't get a a sort of sunken, hollow-looking socket. OK, so, Pearl, we're going to pop your new artificial eye in now. Just pop your head up again for me. And fitting Pearl's new eye is no harder than popping in a contact lens. Yeah. There is a, a fair bit of artistic endeavour in, in what we do, so you, you need to be 
artistically minded to be able to mix the colours to paint and also to carve. Even the veins are carefully replicated, made by teasing out woolen threads. It's corny, but it's probably one of the best jobs in the world. You really are changing people's lives for them. They're coming to you, quite often people say that they put their lives on hold, waiting for us to do our job so that they can then carry on with their lives. All right, can you just lift your chin up for me? Pearl's condition is caused by a malfunctioning gene. There is a lot of research and investigations about it, and uh, in many cases they have got like a mutation in one of the genes. But in other cases it might be due to infections of the mother during pregnancy or the use of some drugs during pregnancy, like any other congenital anomaly. After her appointment, Pearl has a chance to meet up with Toby Stickings. You know what that is, don't you? Okay. Yeah, and to that's Toby's one, and um, Pearl's just going to get one. Um. He was born without any eyes at all, so has two prosthetics fitted, but that hasn't held him back. I'm studying an honours degree in music at Goldsmiths. Now in his 20s, He's had numerous appointments at Moorfields for fittings and operations and has nothing but admiration for the work they do. I think it's fantastic what they do, the way they do the mouldings, the way they make the eyes. It's a really clever process. I have had incidences where I've been talking to people and I've sort of mentioned in conversation well, actually, I've got full size. And they said, really? And they didn't even realise that I had full size. After a long day, it's time for Pearl to perform at the Royal Albert Hall. She's very excited about it, aren't you, Pearl? We started off with a um, school music competition at the Barbican. We've been to Birmingham. And now we're here at the Albert Hall. Is that right, then? She's an inspiration because she, she's sick. She's, you know, she's got a huge smile all the time. You know, she reacts to all the sounds. She's laughing all the time. She responds to all the kids. The kids love her to bits. And, um, and she's, you know, she's wonderful to have her there. You know, it's fantastic to have her there. I don't know how her life's going to turn out, but she's obviously not going to be part of the regular working population. At the same time, she'll need to have some interests or something to keep her occupied, and I, I think music will be one of the mainstays of that. 